what time it is. Marvin Devine, Hoover, Axel, and you know how we do. <laughs> yeah, I got the juice, yeah, I got the juice We game cool, make them look like cool Always play cool, that's the biggest rule Fuck it, what they doing, keep on doing Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. man uh it is it is the warriors quest show that's right i am your host jared a brown and every week we spotlight a chronic disease warrior who's looking for a living donor all right and so tonight is no different all right so don't be stingy all right don't be stingy all right smash that share button all right like Shane Blanchard just put up here, I, I'll show it again. Smash it, all right? Hit that share button. All right, boom, 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 hit it. All right, let's get this information out there because we're all about encouragement. We're all about support, and tonight we're spotlighting somebody who's looking for a living kidney donor. All right, so tonight we need your help, all right? We need your help to share this information so that we can get more, more 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 people to see this all right so tell me where you're from all right don't be a dumb dumb tell me where you're from all right tell me where you're from all right so i'm i've got my homeboy shane blanchard who's going to be co-hosting with me tonight from midwest kidney warriors all right all the way from your friendly state iowa all right, and so I'm going to bring him on. Maybe we can ask him if his uh, favorite college football team won. 
um, and we can uh, bring our special guest in. But please smash that share button. Let's get that. Let's get this information out there. All right, you guys, I know we can do this. So I'm going to bring on Shane Blanchard. All right. A kidney warrior himself. All right. He, Shane is looking for a living kidney donor as well. Pittsburgh, city of champions. All right, here we go. Warriors Quest. All right, everybody, give a very special Warriors Quest show. Welcome to our co host, Shane Blanchard. Boom. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, we just we just partying, man. We're partying right now. We're having a good time, right? Yeah, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. That's what's up. Always. All right, so we've got we've got a very special guest, and um, I watched uh, I watched you and my twin brother Jeff uh, interview her. Um, it's Boris. Boris, how you doing, Boris? Hey, it's great to see you as well, Boris. So I appreciate everything you do, Boris. I was just telling Shane this. I uh, really appreciate your passion and everything you do for the kidney disease community. Thank you so much. Yeah, Boris does good stuff, man. Yes, he does. So um, I, I watched uh, the interview that you and my twin brother did uh, previously. Like I think I watched it yesterday to get more familiar and and maybe uh, get a little, uh, I don't know, just to a little more, uh, I get a better idea and better feel for how this interview may go. So in, in the beginning, here we go. Didn't I just see you guys Sunday? <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm, 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 I'm in a lot of places, Candy. You're going to be more specific. Were you outside my window? Cause I gotta, I gotta ask, where did you see me? <laughs> so Shane, um, one of the questions that my brother asked you in the beginning of his interview, and maybe I'll ask it as well so that we could get this started, is how did you how did you meet or how did you get connected with her? Yeah, well, we were on a Facebook group together and uh, she was on there and just seen her and she was kind of talking about a need for a kidney. And so that's when I, you know, messaged her about Midwest Kidney Warriors and to check us out and see if, you know, I could be any help. Okay. And so that's how uh, then she got in contact with me because, you know, she was a little bit nervous about talking about it and asking family and friends and, you know, just uh, sharing her story. She wasn't sure how to go about it. And so uh, that's when I said, you know, let uh, let us help, you know, people like okay. Jared and you and Jonathan and Jeff and, you know, everybody Kent wrestler. I mean, I said, there's a whole community out there of people that are willing to help. Uh, yeah. that I'd love to introduce you to and, uh, you know, help get the word out. So. Uh, that's that's how everything kind of started. All right, very cool. So, and uh, and then it just uh, and that's what's so um, this is uh, what's so cool about your passion and and what you what you do is that you know you've got and I've said this before, so if I'm an embarrassing shame, but I love you, your I love your passion and I think you literally have a big heart. I do. And when you connect with somebody, I you know you think, well, how can I help this person get connected to other people? You know, and that, that's like in the forefront of what you're thinking is that, you know, how can I make sure these, uh, this new person gets connected to, to other people? And I think that's awesome because. Yeah. And, and sometimes I got to slow myself down because, you know, I've got to need <laughs> myself right now. But, exactly. Right. But I see all these people in the need for people that need kidneys and to share their yeah. stories and they're lost. And they're like, I don't know what to do here. And I don't know what to do here. And I, I just want to help everybody because, you know, I've been dealing with this for, gosh, 25, 26 years, you know, that, that I've dealt with, you know, chronic kidney disease. And, um, I, you know, I can use that experience to help other people. So that's what I do. But uh, I wish I could help more. There's just there's not enough of me to go around. And that's why it's been cool to meet people like you and your brother and, and everyone else that I've mentioned. And Boris, right. You know? Boris there's only one there. of that, you. There's only yeah. one of you, but there's two of me. I'm right. just kidding. It's just yeah, there are two. Clone, of you. Right. <laughs> but 
but it's that's why it's nice you know to meet people and and to help them and to get them in touch with people you know i've used boris you know with a few people that i've come in contact with to you know create posters and create uh -huh. things for them for you know to spread their needs so um yeah man it's it, that's what we're all in here and we're all out here for is to help each other we're all going through the same shit so let's, let's right. get it out there and spread it let's spread it and get it get every every uh, get everything stinky that's right right so uh, what i'll do is uh, if you're okay with this i'd like to have you introduce our special guest uh and, and let's bring her on so um you know her better than i do but i i she's from eagle pass texas is that right yeah i believe so eagle pass yep all right i'm gonna hand the baton to you and have you introduce her then and then i'll do the vip intro so that we can bring okay. her on well guys this guest that we have coming on uh her name is zonia she's from eagle pass texas she's a mother of two and she is a wonderful mother on top of that she is looking for a living kidney donor. So we want her to come on, share her story tonight, let her tell her side of the story, why she needs this kidney, why it's important to her. And hopefully there's someone out there that's going to see Zonia and feel the need to come forward and be her hero. So everyone, please share this and let's get the story out. And please welcome to the show, Zonia. All right, here we go. That rocked. I love it. Thank you. Here we go. VIP intro. <laughs> Well, there we are, special guest. What is up? Hi. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> so we're gonna play musical chairs a bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move you guys around. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm gonna move you around. It won't hurt. I promise. I'm really good at this. I, I'm, I can lift you guys up, and I'm gonna put you in a in a good spot. So hold on. Here we go. Oh, there. Oh, see, I. Hey. That was pretty seamless, right? It didn't hurt. Effortlessly. Yeah. So welcome, welcome to the Warriors Quest show. Um, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. So Eagle Pass, Texas. Um, so, you know, my, my, my twin brother has, uh, he owns a, a house in El Paso, Texas. And uh, I'm, so where, where does that, where does Eagle Pass lie in Texas? Where is that exactly? At the very Southern border of it. We're, literally on the border of mexico and texas and all right it, so it's at the like the opposite end of el paso or but yes okay all right and uh and when i watched the interview with you and my twin brother and shane you were explaining to him a little bit that it's it's a little bit more humid than el paso do so when you go outside is a little bit wet like that, like it would be like in Georgia or something or, or not so much. It, it, yeah. I don't know. It's just really, really hot, man. All right. All right. People say <laughs> right. it's, it's humidity. It's this. It's yeah. Hot. It's just hot. Yeah. <laughs> don't even walk out there. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It was 90 degrees where I'm at today, you know, and it's September, what, it's September the 8th, you know, so 90 degrees on September the 8th, that's, you know, to me, that's really hot, but. Yeah, it was maybe... nice to here. <laughs> was it? Okay. So you feel me, huh? Oh, yeah. All right. So, so uh, Shane, man, uh, we've got, uh, we've got somebody that you met and, and got connected with me, my twin brother to all sorts mm -hmm. of other people. Uh, and now, and now we're showcasing her on the Warriors Quest show to get her information out there. So, um, I, what I'd like to do uh, is I'm going to put you solo. Um, you're now in the middle, okay? You're in the middle. But what I'm going to do is, uh, since you're our special guest in the middle, is I'm going to I'm going to put you solo. So we're only going to see you, but you can hear us, right? We're you know you're not going to get away that fast. We can still hear you and. Um, I'm going to have you just kind of tell your origin story, you know, um, tell us, a, you know, it's just a simple conversation of uh, how, you know, how, uh, where you grew up, you know, whether it's Eagle Pass or somewhere else. And 
when you found out you had kidney disease and what ed- events kind of led to where you're at right now? Okay. Um, so it all started when my mom and dad decided to have me. <laughs> um, no, well, no, no. This isn't, this is, this is, no, I'm kidding. I, I, I didn't think you were going to okay. get that detail. I'm, I, I, I'm kidding. I, okay, let's go forward. Um, no, when I was eight, I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And it, since the very beginning, it was just so uncontrollable. Um, there's nothing that I could do. Everything just made my sugar either skyrocket or drop dangerously low. It just, it was a yo-yo for my whole life. Um, so that and high blood pressure led to me having kidney failure. Um, mm-hmm. The doctors did tell me that uh, pregnancies kind of help worsen my kidneys. And so I, <sighs> chose to only have two babies um i have my babies and i don't regret anything i i wouldn't either i I do dialysis and i don't mind i have my two loves and they're my world my Mm -hmm. son 14 and my daughter's actually going to be 11 in a couple days so they're both my minis they look exactly like me and i i wouldn't change it I wouldn't change it for the world. I wouldn't either. You know, uh, kids are priceless. You know, they're they're worth more than money. And so I, I agree with you. I wouldn't worry uh, about anything, like have any reservations or regrets about that. Definitely. So how how old were you when you first found out that you had, um, you know, diabetes? Were you? I was like eight. Eight years old. Okay. And. And was was it when you were like eighteen, or how how old were you when you started to find out that your diabetes and high blood pressure were affecting your kidney, uh, your kidneys, and that your kidneys were on the decline? I actually okay. So when I got pregnant with my son, they told me, you know, you have to be careful. Uh huh. Um, they didn't say, oh, your kidneys are functioning at so-and-so percent, like, you've got to calm down or nothing. They just said, you have to be careful. Okay. Okay, I'll take my chances. Like, I've wanted kids my whole life. Yeah. So I had my son, and then I had my daughter, and then we were just done. So I had my tube side, and that was that. Uh the whole kidney thing, I passed out one day and they rushed really my arm. Yep. Right outside my house in front of my kids and everything. Wow. My front door and I completely fainted. They called the ambulance. They came and got me and doctor walked into the emergency room and says, sorry, you need emergency dialysis and we are airlifting you to San Antonio. Wow. That is crazy. It was a very crazy, it was a crazy time. It was the day after Christmas. The day after Christmas this all and, happened? Yes. And, wow. And it's because my daughter found her first phone and it was, she was so happy and thrilled to finally get one. And then the very next day this happened. <laughs> like, mom, give it all back. It's like, baby. Oh my gosh. So did you have a lot of fluid that they had to take off uh, when when you got flown out there? Or? Not at all. I, I've never really retained a lot of fluid. Um, the most I've ever had was after I, I was in the hospital. They didn't do dialysis for, they started me and then they didn't do it for a week. And I had five kilos. I don't know. So that's 10 pounds, 10, a uh, little, that's over 10 pounds because it's 2.2 yeah, it pounds per kilo. So that's yeah, that's awesome. almost 12. The IV wow. giving me, but I, I've never been, my fluid restrictions have never been Never too been bad. a big problem for you. No. That's no, that, that's, that's a good thing because it's hard when they tell you, you can't do something. That's the one thing you want to do. Right. 
you, that's how our brains work. We focus on that. Wow. Huh? Yeah. So how long have you been relying on dialysis to keep going? Uh, two and a half years. Okay. Almost two and a half years. And you started with hemodialysis and now peritoneal. So go, can you talk about those two treatments that you did and, and what that's about for people? Yeah. Um, so when I first started, um, I had the chest catheters and uh, they did hemodialysis mm -hmm. at in center. Right. And the longest time, just I wanted something different for me, myself. I, I didn't want to be stuck in a chair. I felt like my kids needed me at home. I needed to be doing stuff for them and it just, it was draining. And so I finally talked to my doctors into giving me a chance to do uh, peritoneal. Um, their reservations with me doing PD is the solution is basically sugar water. The stuff that goes into your chest cavity, like it, it just, it's sugar water and it would mess with my diabetes. But um I'm doing good. I'm balancing the insulin with the solution and it's going really good. I am really enjoying being on PD. Um, I get to be with my kids all day, drive them to school, pick them up, like no issue. So they're really enjoying it too. Okay. All right. So, and the, so it sounds like you like the flexibility of the, the, the peritoneal, the PD. So um, what uh, was that something that was introduced to you? you know, right away? Or was it something that maybe you had gotten more information about because maybe that you, I don't know, rub shoulders with somebody else and got to know somebody else who was doing? It? No, actually, my clinic, and I don't want to talk bad about them, but shame on them for not offering. Yeah, um, I mean, they should offer, they should at least somebody young should offer. Yeah. But, um, Every time that I asked, they gave me an excuse as to why not. Um, my doctor would tell me, well, I, I don't know you well enough to see if you would be a good candidate. I don't think that you're a good candidate yet because you didn't show up on time. I was like five minutes late. Um, I don't think you're a good candidate because, you know, you're too responsible or you're too young. <laughs> what? Or, or whatever. whatever yeah. Or, um, yeah. Same stuff I got. Yeah. Really? So very yeah. similar to what they said about you, Shane. Pretty similar, yeah. It's, oh, and it's wow. very unfortunate because, you know, anybody that's seeing this that's a transplant person wanting a kidney, you know, you want to pick the best modality for yourself and the best for treatment sure. to fit your lifestyle. Yeah. So, and it's unfortunate because, you know, where I was going for dialysis, they did not have peritoneal training at that center. So, you know, and I'd asked about it starting around November and they said, well, let's get through the holidays and we'll look about it. Then January came. Let's get through the let's get through the first of this year. Then February came. Well, I'm going to be talking to some specialists to see if it's something that you can even do. And then February or March came and I still wasn't getting an answer. And then April came and I said, you know what, I'm going to transfer centers. So I transferred uh, di I transferred dialysis centers uh, yeah, to a place that would have. Right. So, you know, you got to be your best advocate. So kudos to you, uh, Zonia, for doing that, because, you know, a lot of places out there, um, as unfortunate as they is, and I don't want to say it's a money grab with them, but it, that's kind of how I looked at it. At this doctor was just a money grab doctor right. and just wanted to keep me because anytime he come around to my chair to talk to me for 10 minutes, he was getting 1500 bucks out of my insurance. And that's the way I looked at him. I didn't look at him as caring about me, the person. I think he just cared about me the money. insurance money that was yeah. coming in so and uh and so i got switched to a place and a doctor that's great there and a staff that's good and good I good miss my old i miss my old staff the staff that i had was yeah. wonderful but yeah know, the doctor was horrible i i ended up having to transfer to a clinic that's three hours away really wow. so i ended up having to do my training over there mm-hmm I had to do uh, three days out of the week for three weeks. And I ended up having to, I, it was getting too much. I couldn't go back and forth. So I ended up having to stay in a room over there. Uh, luckily, wow. it was like, man, I'll help you. And if it wasn't for him, I probably couldn't have done that. But And this is just a testament to the kind of mom that you are to sacrifice that time away from your kids to know that 
you know, I've got to do this for myself here so I can be with them full time and to, to travel like that and to have to put those hours in That's and the training, lot. the training can be a lot too. And it's stressful. And you have to do a kind of a, a mix between hemo and PD at first too, because you just can't go right from one to the other. So it's not a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am type of thing. It's a, it's a sacrifice that you definitely made. And it's a testament to the kind of mom you are to do that for your, for your kids and to be there for them. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is a mixture. I remember I had to go Mondays to Hemo and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I would go to San Antonio and then Friday, wow. oh, I would go back to Hemo yeah. and then weekend off. Wow. What, did that seem like long days for you? God, that was <laughs> month of my life. Yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah. yeah come and go for everything. Uh-huh. Uh, I got to take my kids with me um, two weeks. Yeah, for two weeks, I took my kids with me. And so we ended up just in the hotel rooms and eating junk food and swimming. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, the, the best times are when you can just kind of, uh, you know, spend some time like that with your kids, you know, with us. You know, is is maybe whether it's eating junk food or or just maybe watching a movie or something like that. I mean, do you guys do you look back on that time as maybe uh, even though it was a kind of a stressful time, is maybe just a kind of a a, a time where maybe you, you had you know, uh, hey, that was that one time where we you know we watched movies and ate junk food or whatever. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I I'm I'm so competitive. And uh, the hotel that we were staying at has a putt-putt course. And, what is and, that? And uh, my son is just like me. He's super competitive. And so everything was like, okay, mom, I'm going to beat you this time. But still Like came mini golf or what is that? The what? Is it mini golf or what is yeah. that? It, it's a, a miniature mini golf place. All right. Okay. So it, it's kind of just a little, little bitty course. But it, it's pretty neat. He still can't beat me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a blast. We really did. All right. So let's give a shout out to, to my twin brother, Jeff. Um, he's asking, how are you feeling? <laughs> What's up, Jeff? <laughs> uh, and then we've got <laughs> Shell Allen's also watching. What up, Shell? Hey. So if you're watching this, whether live or replay, reach down and click on that share button. Amen to that. Share, so, share. Yep. Yep. Okay. Hey, love, I love the support that Jeff gives everybody. It's uh, he's got, you know, he's, he's got such a, such a determination to help as many people as he can. And I, I appreciate him watching cause he's, he's up early right now. Yeah. It's five 30 in the morning. Where he's <laughs> yeah. At. Gee, many Chris. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's real early where he's at. So I appreciate him uh, tuning in and, and saying hi. Definitely. So, so you know, uh, I had a, a period of time. Um, it's not identical, but uh, there was a time where we uh, we were in between um, houses where we had sold our house and we were renting for a short period of time. And the house we were renting caught uh, caught fire. <laughs> And, um, I know it's, it, it was a pretty crazy experience. And so we had gotten out and everything was fine. And in fact, uh, most of it, most of, uh, all, most of our belongings actually, you know, everything was saved. So, but because of smoke and, you know, and other things, they, um, they had to clear us out and we were basically displaced for about, you know, like, uh, it was about two. I don't know, maybe about three months, you know, because they had to renovate and put in new carpet and do paint, repaint the walls, you know, all those sorts of stuff. And in that short period of time after we got displaced, we were in the hotel and it was a stressful time for different reasons than yours, obviously. But, you know, my my son being somewhat younger, you know, not understanding that necessarily that we were displaced was just focusing on that we were in a hotel, you know, and, and was really kind of excited about we were in a hotel, you know? Um, and so it's, um, 
it's kind of funny how funny and, and it's um, also very endearing how kids think. Do you know what I mean? That yeah. um, it's the innocence, if you know what I mean, where they don't quite understand, you know, the significance of what we may be going through as adults. But at that moment, you know, they just understand that they're in it in that moment. It's a good moment because of their families together and they're smiling and having fun. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Stuck in one room. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. my kids tend to go different rooms as soon as we get home. So it was really nice to have just everybody together. And I mean, it was it. It was a hard time, but it was fun to have them with me and kind of always be on top of me. You know, they're getting older and they don't want mom anymore. <laughs> be with their friends and stuff. Yeah. It's uh -huh. kind of to just be like, you know what? We get to watch a movie tonight, guys. Or we, we, we get <laughs> fun stuff. All right. Well, what kind of movies do you like to watch? Oh, I anything funny comedies are my thing well i don't know that i can make it rain emojis but i guess it's going upward that's the opposite of raining right so <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's the closest i can get jeff but uh my you know my wife and i um we'll watch each other's movies and um the uh i'm, I'm a big sci-fi guy right i love sci-fi and uh and my wife likes history, you know, so she, we uh, watched uh, the Band of Brothers. If y'all watched that before, the Band of Brothers, mm -hmm. we watched that together. And thanks for sharing, Jonathan. Thanks for tuning in. And then, uh, and then when we watch something I want to watch, we'll watch something like uh, Marvel has uh, their TV shows on Disney Plus, right? And it's a, uh, the new one is what if it's animated, but it's like, uh, what if this, and it changes different scenarios. So, you know, we kind of switch uh, what we watch. And so, you know, everybody's made a little bit differently. So, you know, when your kids watch something you want to watch, um, do, do they do that too? Or they'll may, maybe watch something that maybe you like more and then maybe you do the same too. I tend to not torture them. <laughs> so, if it's usually my kids are pretty we're all pretty in sync about what we want to watch and we have such mixed tastes that it, it's it's good you know um here the other day my son wanted to watch uh a quiet place and it's a scary movie my daughter's not into scary movies but we compromised and she okay a scary movie so then we ended up having to come home and watch like cuddly kitten videos to get everything out of her head but we compromise, and, and that's what's good about us. We, we really do. We work pretty well and just kind of always agree on what to watch. Like, um, I think that the next one to be coming out, too, in fact, I can't wait for Maverick. I am so oddly, freakishly excited for Maverick. <laughs> and the new Spider-Man movie. It's yeah. Actually really no Way Home. Cool. Or, mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen the new trailer, yeah. Yeah, it looks yeah really man. Excited. Anything DC, anything Marvel, I'm all in. Um, I've loved Marvel and DC movies. All right, me too. So yeah. speaking of which, um, my all wife and I, my my wife and I, Shane, just last weekend we watched for the first time the uh, Zack Snyder version of the Justice League, um, and that was epic. Um, I mean, I thought the first one was decent, but I thought that the movie wasn't it didn't flow as well, and now I know now I understand why because. With Zack Snyder's vision, it really kind of, you know, it was a little bit more fluid, if you know what I mean. That was awesome. But yeah. So, but anyway, so what, what I'd like to, to, to kind of get, um, you know, um, from, I want to kind of get to know your kids and get to know you. And um, you, you, you just beam with excitement when you're talking about your kids. And I, I love it. I look at you smile right now, just, you know, when we're talking about them. And um, I, I definitely, you know, love that. I do because, you know, I any potential living donors that are watching right now, I, I really want them to see how you light up and how you're just, you know, the love on your face when we talk about your kids, because that's genuine. That's real. You know what I mean? That's that's definitely, you know, something that 
even if they don't have kidney disease and they don't quite understand your your journey, they can understand the love that you have for kids generally, you know, and oh. I love that. So, <laughs> man, um, if if you could tell me something about maybe your tell me something about your kids that maybe something that they've done recently to show their love, you know, to you, what would that be? I don't know. My daughter hugs and kisses me every single day. There's not a day that goes by. And um, when we're away, we, we have a group chat, just us three. And, and we're just always chatting on it. And we're just always together, man. It, it feels like even my son, my 14 year old, he'll come and he'll want mom cuddles and he'll want me to scratch his head and, and just lay with him and talk to me. Like I'm, I'm very thankful that both of my kids have that connection with me where we can come together, us three, and we can talk about anything, but they also know that they can come to be separate and talk to me about whatever. Okay. I just, I so love them for that, but even though they're already older, they're my big babies and <laughs> we enjoy hugging yeah. and kisses and well, they They'll even help you on your dialysis as well, right? Your daughter helps you with dialysis sometimes. Yes, she helps me connect. She's my little nurse. She oh, that's dope. <laughs> she goes and buttons for me, and she she she'll make sure that everybody has masks on. And oh, really? Hands are off, and that the dogs are out, and she'll get mad at me um, if something is not right. And so my son likes to play Jenga with me. He likes to get the boxes down. Um, but he's, he's always called it playing Jenga. <laughs> <laughs> Says it. Oh, uh-huh. That's kind of uh, the thing that you guys do together then. Yeah. They, they both really helped me out. Awesome. Thanks for uh, sharing Frederico. <laughs> my, my 11 year old, my, my little girl, she's actually getting to where she's getting more confident in, in helping me set up. So she's already getting to where she inserts the cassette by herself. And she'll do the drain plug and, and she's still not sure about wanting to connect like the solution lines to the bags, but she's working up to it. Okay. So what we were doing a test run just the other night, um, you were getting prepared too. And how long did it Shane, or, you know, either one of you can ask this, but how long was it before you guys are comfortable with, you know, doing it? Um, you know, up, there, there's a training period. That's not next, not necessarily what I'm asking. Like, you know, how, how long does it take before you, you, you know, it's almost like second nature or you're, it's, you know, something that you're extremely comfortable and you don't mind doing anymore. For me, it took a while. It, it was a month before I, I got used to everything. And I'm still not like a hundred percent sure if I'm doing it. Okay. Quick, but, <laughs> my labs are all coming back really good and it seems like everything's working so i must be doing something okay all right what about I you shane a minute longer so for me i was on hemodialysis for a little over a year and i was sick of it so mm -hmm. i was excited to get back to pd and i had done pd previously um and it took me maybe a week or so until i was fully comfortable it was never really difficult for me it was more about not wanting to do any steps wrong and not okay. wanting to do anything to give myself peritonitis yeah. and making sure things are clean and stuff. So, um, but now, you know, it's, it's second nature. I mean, heck, I think it took me like maybe an hour the first time to get it going. Now I'm done in 20 minutes, you know, um, after the prime. So it doesn't take, it's, it's simple now it's, it's easy, but at first, yeah, it was a little bit overwhelming, but it's not that bad. You're a pro now, huh? <laughs> I like to think so. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, we've got uh, your kids are are uh, they're getting they're seeing you and they're 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 noticing it and it's becoming something that's um you know the new normal right because it's it's something that they're seeing more often but um what. What are some things that that 
we don't want necessarily to to always be with you. Um, let's talk about some things for any potential living donors that may be watching now live or on a replay. Like, what are some things that that you struggle with? Uh, would it be uh, insomnia? Or what are some things that you deal with, you know, or battle with as a kidney warrior, you know, regularly? The three things that I deal with the most is number one, insomnia during the night. During the day, I am sleepy constantly. Okay. Number three is my appetite. I'm starving one minute. I take two bites and I am full. <laughs> and it, I just can't seem to get a taste for anything. You can't satisfy so, your appetite. Yeah, or... I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm craving pasta. And I take a bite and it's like, I can't do this. Okay. So... Is that the same for you, Shane, or, or you is know, that different for you? You know, no. I mean, it, it's odd because I walk around with fluid in my gut all day long. So for me, I fill up quickly. Okay. You know? And so, um, and then I sometimes I I have days where I'm really really exhausted, and then some days I have all kinds of energy. You know, so it's it's different. Um, everybody's a little bit different on how how they are with it, but my appetite seems to be okay. Um, it's just that when I eat, I don't eat as much as I used to um, because of the fluid that I carry around. So I feel like I'm filled up early. So the insomnia can, can be uh, rather exhausting emotionally because, you know, we need our, you know, our brain needs to kind of slow down and get rest. Right. And uh, and that may lead to, you know, all sorts of other problems, whether it's irritability or or maybe just not f your, your, you know, focus or concentration, other things. So, um, yes, for me. There we go. Much I'm, better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yes. The question is, is, how can you do this? <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> that's pretty close, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> now I'm forgetting the question. Um, I blame it on Shane. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Insomnia. Um, we're on insomnia. We're talking about that. And then, uh, and then you adjusted your camera and then, and then we started laughing so, or, or Shane started laughing. And then, yeah, it was Shane. so, <laughs> um, other than insomnia, um, what would you say? Okay. It's the appetite. All right. So we had, you said three things that you struggle with. So you've got insomnia, appetite. And what was the third one? Just being tired during the tired day. fatigue. Okay, there we go. I'm not tired at night when I'm supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> You're alert, I'm yeah. Supposed to be sleeping. It's I'm just. I feel like I'm gonna pass out because I'm so tired. Okay. And then you said um, you can't seem to get satisfied, like when you eat or something like that. You never, you never get the craving that you used to have, which. I get that too. You or you crave several things, and you eat something, but then it's not good enough, and you're just like, now I kind of want something else, but it just doesn't taste right. Like I right. don't know, if taste buds are changing with it, or maybe that's what's getting cleaned out too. Your palate, right? No, but <laughs> whatever it might be, right? The one thing that I do crave the most is Diet Coke. That was my. Oh go really? It was my go-to for everything. Everybody knew that I always had a Diet Coke in my hand, but it's high in phosphorus. And <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I, I do sneak one every now and then, but I really try not to. Okay. So my, my twin brother, Jeff, he's noticing somehow your shirt is almost the same color as the, the, the color of your wall. I don't, oh. you know, he, I don't know. Uh, it, somehow he's he's uh, seeing that you're color coordinated with the the painting on your wall, the color of your wall. Well, it's because y'all have back green. Yeah. And so I kind of wanted to do. Something. Sure. Right. Yeah, you're sly like that. Yeah. So, 
So the, uh, the things that you crave, you've, the Diet Coke. All right, there we go. And A&W, at least you've got the zero sugar right there. That's good. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I don't I don't see the name, but I saw that they asked if I like root beer. I, I do like root beer. Uh -huh. Don't get me wrong, but Diet Coke is my jam like that. All right. That's my go to. Is it? So, you know, uh, I I don't mind Diet Coke, but if because um, I uh, I try to. I actually try to drink uh, Coke Zero Sugar. I'm so used to calling it uh, Coke Zero, but I try to drink, you know, Coke Zero Sugar. It doesn't roll off the tongue as well. But to me, it, it tastes more like regular Coke, you know. But but people say that after they've drunk, all right, Diet Coke for so long, you know, that they're used to that taste of Diet Coke, you know, and they miss that that taste. And that's probably what's happened with you. And yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right, we've got uh, we've got uh, Mama Blanche or Mama K there watching. Thanks for tuning in. Hi. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so, said tongue. I did say tongue, didn't I? It doesn't roll off the tongue. I didn't even notice I said that. So, <laughs> so Jeff, uh, he says, uh, "Got to go to work." Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. We uh, thanks for tuning in again. So Thanks. early in the morning, he's in Abu Dhabi, everyone. All right. Abu Dhabi is in the UAE across the pond. So thank you. I heard that we were going to all three of us jump on a plane and go visit him. That's what he said. That's you know, he's paying for our tickets first class. Right. Yeah. I, get, I get dibs on shooting off a bomb. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the girls go first, Shane. <laughs> Be a gentleman, please. Well, I want to do. I want to drop the nuclear on Afghanistan. Oh wait, I'm getting political. Don't do that. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So here we go. <laughs> okay, we. What are some other things that you miss? That once you do get a transplant, that you'd like to have again. That maybe your fluids, okay. even though you don't necessarily struggle with that, you know, isn't such a concern anymore. Maybe. <laughs> You know, maybe you're going to buy a big old liter of Diet Coke or, you know, what are some other things? I think the. There she is. <laughs> the thing, hi. hi. We've got a new star. Just push him away. Okay, Kay. go away, Marvin. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hi. I think the thing that people don't realize it's not just the fluid restriction it's the things that you eat too right and i love mangoes i love them i'm a too. big mango fan yeah. yeah they're rich in potassium so are bananas and tomatoes mm -hmm. and just apricots and and just a bunch of things that, that you can't have i love orange juice i can't have it you know um there's just a bunch of things that you don't think of that you can't have anymore. Yeah, Tootsie Rolls. With this, pickles was a big no-no for me. And that... Pickles. That was my biggest... I, I don't mind giving up Diet Coke. Uh-huh. I'd give up the mangoes if I could just have my pickles back, but... Really? No. You know, I snack on bread and butter pickles sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry. She almost are hurled. Pickles are supposed to be sour, sir. Uh oh, uh oh. Not sweet. Not but not the bread and butter pickles. They're just like me. They're nice and sweet. <laughs> They're nice That's and gross. Sweet. Huh? Do you add some peanut Those... butter in there? Then I'd be down. Dude, peanut butters with bread and butter pickles. That's oh, that would bad. rock. Yeah, yeah, that would rock. Yeah. yeah Throw then... some honey on top of that. Yeah, then I'm lining up. If Make you a add the bread butter. and butter pickle, peanut butter, and honey yeah. sandwich. Right. That's perfect. Y'all are about to make me gag. <laughs> I have tried pickles with Tabasco, and those are delicious. Yeah. What? Those oh, my gosh. Yeah, I've done that. TikTok where they were doing um, ranch pickles. They would take a, a packet of ranch mix and put it in the jar and shake it up and leave it in the fridge overnight. And they were coming out as ranch pickles and... According to the girl, they were really good, but I don't care to try that. 
Yeah, that'd be kind of wasting a whole jar of pickles if you didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, that's that. <laughs> I don't know about wasting, but that maybe, maybe, you know, because you know, it is a whole jar of pickles. Let's just keep them apart. Yeah. But cucumbers are underrated, though, you know? Yes. So let's let's talk about what you'd like to do once you do have a kidney transplant. We've talked about what you'd like to eat or drink, but what are some things that maybe are, you know, what are the things that are constraining you now? You know, the flexibility to go travel or the flexibility to, you know, um, I don't know, just do this or that with your home girls or whatever. So funny that you mentioned that. Um <laughs> I told myself the moment that I started searching for a kidney, I said, when and if I do get one, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I am going to the beach by myself. I'm going to go for five days by myself, not plan anything. All right. The only thing is I'm going to take my clothes and where to stay. And from there, I have no plans. I Who needs clothes on a beach? I know, right? I mean, it's so overrated. It is overrated, but unfortunately... <laughs> I mean, I you're in the water, right? That's the way I look at it. Yeah. It's Those awesome. are my favorite spots. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but that's, that's the one thing that I'm looking forward to. That, and I told my kids that we could just go somewhere, just the three of us. Because so, it's been really hard to plan anything. So the, the alone time first, though. Yes. And then the kids and you together. All right. All right. Yes. That's yes. fair. And uh, anywhere in particular, you know, that you, any any specific place or? For me by myself? Yeah, like Barcelona I, or. No, I don't Maui. Want to that far. I've already been to Maui. Love it but can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, if I could go anywhere, I think it would be a beach in Mexico somewhere. Okay. All right. That sounds nice. Puerto Vallarta or Cancun. Yeah. Nice. And now then you talking. can get an, I can speak Spanish too. Watch this. And when you go there, you can get a El Taco. <laughs> Con lechuga. <laughs> yeah. Some Doritos. <laughs> See? You would rock at Taco Bell. Right, yeah. Told you. Yeah, I got I got it down. I know how to order my food. Got it. <laughs> Shay, yeah. you come with me. I'm there. Yeah. Hey, let's all just plan a vacation. Maybe instead of Jeff taking us to Abu Dhabi, maybe he can just take us to, you know, to Can Cancun or somewhere else like that. Yeah. yeah. I'm in on that. Missiles in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll get me one of them fancy banana thong things, you know. Those are <laughs> yeah, really hot. To the beach. Huh? We're not going to the beach then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put my big umbrella hat on with my thong. <laughs> Hold on. Only if you do the white nose. Yes, I will have the white on my nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Even Kay says she's going. All right. She's hopping along. She's going. Oh. With <laughs> so, so let's, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about now. You've talked about what you'd like to eat, what you'd like to drink, what you'd like to, to go, where you'd like to go, what you'd like to do. Then put those together and explain to me, uh, and, and share with me if you would, please, you know, the feelings that you'd have with your kids without the feeling that you have now with having the constraints and, you know, having some of the limitations that you do have now and maybe some of the fears, some of the the mystery uh, that comes along with your journey. Um, right now, and, that's what it is, is there's a lot of uncertainties and I don't want to leave this world without my kids knowing that I fought, that I fought for them, that I fought for my life. You know, if, 
if something happens and I don't get a kidney and Lord forbids it, but if I pass away tomorrow, my kids will know that I tried my best. They'll know that mom loves them and that I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up because I want a beautiful little family to to thrive. I'm actually going back to school. Um, I'm looking forward to a future with them, to bettering ourselves and being able to be together without dialysis in our lives. Going okay. back to quote unquote normal. <laughs> you know, before all right. all, I was a soccer mom. I was a coach, actually. I, I coached my son's football team and basketball team. Okay. Baseball team. So I was always really active with them. I was always at their schools. I was always doing something. And then now it's like, I can't. Uh huh. Mom, let's go for a walk. And it's like, I'm too tired. Right. As much as I try to get stuff done with them, unfortunately, half of the time it's let's sit down and watch a movie instead because I'm too tired to go for a walk or I'm too tired for this. But we're trying. We're working through this and learning as we go. Okay. How how happy would that make you? You know, to have less of the less limitations or less less constraints or I would be ecstatic. <laughs> I would probably freak out the moment I find out that I'm getting a kidney. I would probably wake up the whole neighborhood just screaming up and mm -hmm. down. That's awesome. That is awesome. And so, you know, the 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 awesome thing is uh, is you've got a lot of luck on your side right now. I got to tell you, um, is that you know a lot of people that have been on the Warriors Quest show. There's a good percentage. I haven't crunched the numbers, and maybe I should. Steve Belcher uh, has asked me several times to crunch the numbers, but there are many people that come on this show that that later on do receive a kidney donor, and it's it's pretty amazing. So um, luck is on your side, you know. Luck is on uh, anybody who comes onto the show because it is it is just amazing what social media does because um honestly yeah thank you for sharing shell thank you shell has been on the show and i i i know that she's gonna find a living kidney donor and i i can say i know you're gonna find one um it may not be maybe it's not a living kidney donor maybe i shouldn't say living but i know you're gonna have one and it's just a matter of when because I wouldn't be doing this and I wouldn't be interviewing people if I thought this was just, yeah, it, sometimes I get a little whimsical and I'm, you know, I have a little fun, you know, when I did this, you know, with my face and I, you know, and I couldn't think of what we were really talking about, but, you know, I make things light a little bit, but that's, but I wouldn't do this every week and I wouldn't interview people if I honestly didn't feel as though God wants me to do this. I know he does. I know he loves you and I know he loves your kids and I know that he wants you to be with them and that he wants you to, to have a better future, a brighter future, you know, something that you can look forward to, you know, something that will have less strain. So you don't feel like a puppet, so to speak, you know? Oh yeah. You know? Thank so you. That's going to happen. Yes. I, <laughs> that. I, you know, when I, first met Shane, I was very down on myself. I didn't know which way was up or down. And now I, I smile again. Good. Yes. Smile is smile is good. Smiling is contagious. Uh, you know, um, it, it helps uh, your, your brain when you, when you smile, <laughs> your brain just, you know, um, just thinks you're happy, even when you're really not. If you're smiling and you're not really happy, if you see yourself in the mirror smiling and you're just doing it because you want to smile, and you can actually have more positive thoughts when you smile. But it's awesome when someone, you know, provides an environment like that. And Shane, man, I'm, I'm. It's an honor to to call you my friend because, uh, you know, you've you've uh, brought other people to 
the kidney disease community and, and you've introduced them to me and to other people and you're you're giving them light you're giving them hope and that's what it's what i want to do and i think we're doing that together and i think that's just uh it's a uh, it's an awesome thing it's magnificent that we can provide that because you know to see you smile right now and the way you talk about your kids and, and the love that you have for your family you know i i don't know of anybody else that right now i don't think anybody would say that you know that they would deny that you don't look like you love your kids and that you want a better future. I think everybody would agree with me about that. I do. I, I really am looking forward to the next chapter of my life. I, I want to get through this hump because that's all this is, is just a hump. And I want to better their lives. Yeah. It's a small little, you know, obstacle and, you know, and uh, God will see you through this. It, you know, it, it's a, uh, it's not an easy journey, you know, and I wish it were, but, you know, there are many times in my life that I wish I hadn't the heart, I didn't have the hardships that I have. And I, I can only imagine your hardships and uh, I admire your strength and your courage and your, and your toughness. I do. Thank you. It's also not impossible. No, it's not. No, it's not. That, so we've got a, a strong community that's, uh, that's, encouraging you and supporting you and so i'm very happy that we're that we have you in our community now you're part of the family you're you know you're enveloped so to speak or we've got you now thank you <laughs> i appreciate y'all i appreciate everything that y'all do for me and for others like me it's i can feel the love y'all and there's hope for everyone i mean that's that's the one thing that was was Zonia when she, you know when she says that she was you know down and upset and didn't know what to do and lost and oh my god and yeah so um, you know it's just there's hope there's hope for everyone out there and so um, you know there's there's never there's never that brick wall uh, in front of you um, you just have to remember that you can always break through it and it's a hell of a lot easier to break through it when you got people behind you that are hammering away along with you and that's what we are as a group together that are breaking down these walls and exactly you know, finding transplants for people mm -hmm. you know and, oh, and the thing geez, i just thought of that the hammering down the cement wall thing was good <laughs> that is good we need <laughs> to write that so, down and it's so true it <laughs> is it's a good analogy i like that because uh you know those little tiny you know those little when you're chiseling it you know it's going to take a little time but it, yeah yeah gotta like break that. out the hammers the warrior quest show is the hammer yeah bam all right hold on i think i have a don't i have one yeah i think i do hold on it might hit you. oh there it is there we at go. least they hit me on the head yeah Watch out. But, oh, sorry about that. Right in front of you. Definitely got to share this video. Oh, no. Man. And then it hit her up above. Sorry about <laughs> that. Oh, yeah. Getting an uppercut. Sorry time. about that. That was, oh, right there. She got it again. Oh, my bad. Uppercut. Let me turn that off. It's hitting both of you now. That That is just not very guest or co host friendly. I apologize. So, seriously, you guys, it's been an honor. Um, really appreciate you coming on the Warriors Quest show. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say, let's do this first. Um, Shane, what would you like to say to her in regards to what kind of hope or an encouragement that you'd like to give her? So I got to get on one knee here live. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, just, you know, the biggest thing is just don't get down on yourself and don't, uh, don't let negative thoughts get into your mind. That's the one thing that can really hurt, uh, not only your recovery, but your journey uh, during this kidney failure is to, you know, let the devil get in and get his words kind of ingrained in there. You know, it's kind of like a tree with roots, you know, it'll get in there and they spread out farther and farther. So don't allow that into your, into your mind. Just push that stuff out, stick around with your kids and, and do the things that make you happy and do the things that bring you joy and, you know, do your treatments, eat right, do the things you're supposed to do. And, and uh, you're going to, you know, have a lot better journey health wise, a lot better journey mentally as well. So just keep your mind on positive things and don't let the negatives influence you. Don't let people uh, that are negative influence you get them out of your life. Uh, stick around people that are going to make a difference and that are going to be positive. Uh, so that's the biggest thing I could say right now is uh, don't, don't be negative. Don't let it come upon you. All right. Did you hear that? I heard it. All right. 
<laughs> all right. So what we'll do is I'm going to put you solo now. All right. And Zonia, um, what I'd like to do is, is ha hear from you. Like if you want to give your shout outs, you know, um, who would you like to shout out? Um, who would you like to thank, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, and we'll get this information out there for the whole world to share your message and, and, uh, Let's reach a, a living kidney donor with your message, okay? It's putting me on the spot there. I don't want to. I know, yeah. 30, but no, I, I, I'm not going to mention any names. Just you know who you are. I appreciate everything that you guys are doing for us, for everybody in the kidney community. Uh, the two people that I will shout out are my kids, man. Thank you for being my rocks, my world, my little doctor and nurse and helping me get through this because without them lord knows that i wouldn't have even tried i awesome. would have been up and, and i i wouldn't have been here awesome but for them i will keep fighting and i will get it someday and i will i will get better awesome well said you will get better so i want to thank you again both of you thanks shane for coming on and and, and thank you all right you've been a great special guest all the way from Eagle Pass, you know, and and uh, this is we're actually representing a little bit. Uh, Shane's from Iowa. I'm from I'm I'm from Utah, and you're from Texas. You know, we're kind of spread out a little bit. Yeah, you know, we're kind of uh, representing a, a little bit of uh, a different part of the country right here, huh? Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on, you guys. Um, let's uh, let's keep in touch. All right. And don't be stingy. All right. Anybody who's watching this, please share this. But thanks, you guys. All right. I'm going to I'm going to close this down. Appreciate you both for coming on. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ben. You're welcome. All right. Thanks, you guys. So I apologize for getting a little bit of a late start, especially for my uh, special guest and my co-host for being I want to thank them for being so patient with me while I got started. It was a little bit of a late start tonight. I had a little bit of an obstacle I had to overcome, and I appreciate you sticking with us tonight. Um, we've had a, a great guest, all right? Zonia is, a, again, um, great mother. And please watch this again on replay and see the love that she has for her kids, all right? Watch her as she talks about her kids you know, and, and see her light up and smile and just understand the, the great amount of love that she has, all right, for her kids and for her family. And if you if you feel inspired, please, all right, become a living donor for her. The information scrolling across the screen right here. All right. It doesn't matter if you're if you're not all right, uh, blood type O. You can also apply with the paired exchange program. So it doesn't matter what blood type you have. So please share this and, and let's get this information out there so that we can make sure that as many people know as possible that we can uh, connect with the living donor. All right. Thanks you guys for watching. Peace. I'm out. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Sound right, boys.